Alright, what's up guys? This is Biz from Beastnooch.com. Today I'm starting another, well, I'm restarting the map ad tutorial system. I tried to do this about a decade ago and I didn't get very far, but we're going to give it another shot. This is going to be a, like, a full crash course on how to do map ads in the Half-Life 2 uh, mod S mod. Uh, we're going to start very simple. We're going to talk today about the developer weapons in the game, uh, what I used for making map ads, and we'll get it uh, as advanced as, um, well, basically taking a blank text document, turning it into a map ad. We'll do triggers. We'll do entity groups. We will do um, building physics props, uh, elaborate ones working with brushes so we're gonna cover the gamut these videos I'm gonna try to keep them short I'm not gonna do any video editing on them at all so there's gonna be mistakes you just gotta deal with it I don't got a lot of time for these uh, so we're gonna jump right in so S mod is a Half-Life 2 mod just as a quick background the creator of the mod put in a cool system called the map ad system where you can actually take uh, let's say a Half-Life 2 campaign map or even a custom deathmatch map or a counter-strike map you can put it into his mod take a text file and add stuff to the map without ever having to crack open the hammer map editor or uh, recompile a map or try to decompile one and change it no 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 forget all that we'll take a text document and uh, make this thing into something totally different so it's a great way to spice up a map maybe that you've played a hundred times and it's boring you know like these campaign maps are kind of it's a very powerful system and uh, not a lot of people are using it hopefully this series will expand the knowledge and get some more people interested because this would be a great way to add a lot of content to the mod so today we're talking about developer weapons and we're gonna give them to ourselves right now so let's start with the most basic of basics uh, the developer key hit options go to keyboard advanced and make sure you check the enable developer console Oops, you probably uh, want to apply that and so you can open the developer console with the tilde key on a US keyboard it opens this cool prompt where you can type stuff in uh, you give the game commands here basically so let's start with the most basic one we're gonna want to turn SV cheats to one make sure it's on and then we're gonna give ourselves a couple weapons so give weapon grab uh, not gravity gun but the we're gonna give ourselves the fizz gun we're gonna give ourselves the fizz cannon and we're going to give ourselves the Fizz Launcher. And also, let's give ourselves the Node Maker. We're not going to cover this today, but I'll talk about it just as a developer weapon. Alright, so we got three main tools. And uh, by developer tools, what I mean is I use these for making map ads. Uh, some I use more than others, but they all have a, a valid purpose. So, first up, the Gravity Gun. Probably don't need to explain much about this. You use it a lot in the campaign. It's useful for picking up physics objects and carrying them around when you're doing map ads or placing them in certain spots. That's about it. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of use, but it does get some. Okay? Next up, the physics gun, E3 physics. Uh, or weld gun, I guess S mod calls it. This thing is um, pretty useful for building physics props. Uh, just to go over it briefly, primary fire will grab an item or a, a, an entity or a prop and you can kind of carry it around. The use key uh, disables motion on it. It makes an, uh, like a ping sound and then it's locked in place. You can do all kinds of neat stuff with this. Uh, whoops. Well, including building. Uh, that's mainly what I use it for when doing map ads is uh, building things, physics props. So uh, once you lock something in place with the use key, 
uh, sh hit it again with the primary fire and it'll re-enable motion on it. So that's mainly what I use it for. Uh, secondary attack on this thing shoots these little globs. I think they're like welding globs. I don't know what they're called. They're kind of useless in S-Mod. Uh, if you get too crazy with them, it'll crash the game. So not good. Uh, just as a quick example what they do, you could uh, take a barrel and uh, let's say put one there and put one here and the game will kind of magnetize, pull them together and lock them in place. Uh, again, I don't use that very much, but it's there if you want to do it. could be useful for stacking barrels or something. Uh, the reload key on this weapon actually um, will pull these little welding globs uh, back. So, anyways, that's how that gun works. It gets a fair amount of use. This pistol with the uh, little blinky crosshair is the node gun. Uh, this will probably be its own separate video. Just quickly, it's used to place nodes in the map. Uh, primary fire shoots a node. Uh, the alt fire is for linking. E is changing your target type. Or the use key is for changing target type. And uh, the reload key is switching with what type of nodes you use. We're not getting into this today, but it's there. It's a developer weapon. Uh, okay, what else? The physics launcher or stuff launcher. This thing gets the most use. It's kind of a neat gun when you first uh, load up S-Mod, you're like, oh, this thing seems awesome. But actually, I'm almost 100% sure that uh, the author of the mod turned this into a developer tool for map adding. Uh, so what this does is it's basically like a cloning tool. Uh, Alt fire grabs uh, an entity, and then primary fire will clone it and shoot it out. So, um... So you can do it with boxes, um, like, hey, I want to make a box, boom, there it is. Hey, I want to make a barrel, grab it, and then shoot it out. Uh, you can do this with NPCs. I mean, it works on almost anything except for, like, static props, stuff like that. I think I can even grab this head crab canister. Yeah. So you can see, like, this thing is a very powerful tool. Okay. Uh, that's basically how it functions. Primary fire or uh, alt fire is to grab the item to clone, and then uh, primary fire shoots it out and clones it. Why is this so useful? Well, besides being able to just quickly um, like grab something like a metro cop and then put a bunch of them in your game, it also, whenever you grab an item, in the console, it puts some handy dandy code about whatever you just grabbed. This is actually map add code. You can copy this right out of the console, slap it in the text file, and this will work as a map add. So, this is insanely helpful. And you can see it does it for everything. There's the Metro Cop we just grabbed, there's the wooden boat. It has uh, everything from what kind of entity it is, it's a prop physics. It has its origin, where it exists in the map, the angles it's uh, at, right here, and then it even has like what kind of model it's using. So this is why the uh, the stuff launcher gets so much use in uh, map making map ads. However, right out of the box, this thing is uh, kind of broken. So there's a bunch of uh, console variables, command variables that kind of govern how this thing behaves. We're going to take a look at them. I have a, a handy list pulled up here. Let me just grab it right here. Uh, so this is a, a list of all the, not all of them, but a lot of the command variables in SMOD. And we're going to go down to the Fizz Launcher. So there's two we're going to look at today and that's one is uh, Throw Force. And the other one is Dissolve Entity. So, in SMOD, 
open up your console, fizz, launch, dissolve entity. So by default, this is set to one. And what that does is whenever you um, grab an item to clone, it dissolves it and deletes it. It's a neat effect, but it's really um, awful for doing map ads because uh, sometimes you want stuff, you don't want to clone something or grab something to clone and then have it get deleted, especially when you're doing like a, a, a build project where you're building with physics props. That's really annoying. So setting this to zero, make sure that it, uh, the item that you grab to clone will stay in the map. So that's, you definitely want to have that at uh, zero like that when you're doing map ads. The other one I want to do is throw force and by default that set at 2000. Basically what this variable does is um, it determines like how far an item shoots out when you uh, primary fire with the stuff launcher. So for example if I set it to like 500 you can see it doesn't go very far. Uh, the default of 2000 is fine. The only problem I have with it is that with some physics props, uh, they will actually break if you shoot them too close to a wall at such a high velocity. So I find that setting it at 1000 is a happy medium. Well, sometimes it's a happy medium. They won't break as often. Of course, no guarantees. I've tested a lot of settings and I like 1000. And uh, other than that, I think that'll cover it. Uh, oh yeah, one last thing with this is you can actually charge the primary fire and it does like a little cannon effect. And I'm pretty sure what this does is it makes sure that the prop uh, breaks if it's like an explosive. Other than that, I'm not too sure what it really does. But it's a neat little thing. So uh, yeah, that should cover it. Those are the basic tools, guys. We're going to use these to build a map ad file. So stick around, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.